A common practice among many farms is applying pesticides or chemical poisons to kill unwanted animals in the ponds. Certain kinds of fish like tilapia and gobies can enter the pond with the seawater during flushing. If these are not killed, they will either eat the shrimp or compete with it for food. One practical means of clearing the ponds of these pests is applying deris root, a cheap and easily available plant poison. The root is first crushed and soaked overnight in water. The liquid is then sprayed evenly on the pond surface. The poison will take effect immediately, killing the fish within minutes of application. Unlike some chemical pesticides which remain in the pond mud for a long time, the root poison breaks down easily and can be washed away without causing harm to the shrimp. After liming, the pond is fertilized with animal manure. This is to encourage the growth of natural food that will form part of the shrimp's diet. About 400 kilograms of chicken dung is adequate for one hectare. Other animal wastes such as pig manure and cow dung can also be used. Two or three days after fertilization, the water is allowed to enter the pond. The initial water depth should be 5 to 8 centimeters. It should be increased gradually according to the growth of natural food until it reaches a depth of 75 to 100 centimeters. The faster the growth of natural food, the quicker the pond can be made ready for stocking. Shrimp fry can be obtained from fry gatherers or hatcheries. Before transporting, the fry are counted and placed in plastic bags. These bags should be filled with oxygen and transported under cool conditions to prevent the fry from dying. The fry at this stage are very sensitive to changes in water temperature and hence they must be acclimatized before releasing into the ponds. Stocking should be carried out only at night or before 10 o'clock in the morning. This will prevent the shrimp from being exposed to hot weather and will thus improve their chances for survival. The supply canal is normally filled during high tides. It is at this time that the seawater is allowed to enter. The inflow of water to the various ponds can be regulated by the pond gate or the inlet pipe till the desired depth is reached. During the neap tide when the water level is not sufficiently high, a pump can be used to draw water from the supply canal to the rearing ponds. Water management is a very important operational function in shrimp culture because pond water management ensures optimal growth of the shrimps in the pond enclosure. The water should be changed every day if possible and at least once in every two weeks. Change of pond water is particularly important in hot and rainy weather. It is during such weather conditions that the water becomes very saline or very fresh. Either condition is not healthy for the shrimps. The outlet and the inlet pipes as well as the gates should be checked every day for damage to prevent losses due to leakages or overflow. Based on feeding and water management, shrimps can be raised in either extensive, semi-intensive or intensive pond culture systems. In extensive farming, the culture system depends on natural food and management of water resources. The stocking density from this culture system is usually low, ranging from 3,000 to 10,000 fry per hectare, depending on the fertility of the water, which can be enriched with the application of organic manures or inorganic fertilizers. Method of shrimp farming often in polyculture with milkfish usually yields between 300 to 500 kilograms of shrimps per hectare per year. 
most of the shrimp farms in Asia still employ this method of farming. In the semi-intensive system, the ponds are normally stocked between 10,000 to 50,000 fry per hectare, but with greater water exchange and supplementary feeding in the form of trash fish, mussel meats, and formulated feeds. The yield is correspondingly higher, ranging from 1,000 to 3,000 kilograms per hectare per year. This farming system entails relatively low pond development costs and permits a relatively better rate of returns over investment. The intensive farming system requires a higher stocking density of more than 50,000 fry per hectare, greater exchange of pond water, application of aeration and supplementary feeds. This system also needs more skillful personnel to man the farms. While the yields from the intensive farming system range between 5,000 to 12,000 kilograms per hectare per year, the system itself also incurs very heavy capital and operational inputs. At the end of each culture period, which is about four to five months after initial stocking, the shrimps are sampled with a cast net and harvested at an average size of 35 grams using a filtered net installed at the outlet pipes. After the shrimps are harvested, they are packed with ice in baskets or styrofoam boxes. This is to prevent mechanical damage and bacterial spoilage to the shrimps on their way to the various market channels. The shrimps are then sent to retail outlets where they will be sold to local consumers. The shrimps to be exported, however, are processed in factories. Here they are peeled and frozen before being packed in suitable containers for transport to international markets. Shrimp farming can therefore be a rewarding experience to the would-be farmer. With sufficient capital and proper management skills, the culture of this high-value products can provide a profitable and steady source of income.